Hi, this is Kimberly and I would like to welcome you back to my channel, a Bookkeeping Journey, where I share my journey towards building my bookkeeping business. Today's video, I'm going to let you meet another wonderful referral that I met. I just thought that sh she should also be shared on my channel. You know, I'm very transparent with you and I realize that I can't just go there and meet people and know what businesses have to offer for me, but I also have to share them with you. That's an addition to this channel as well. So today's video, we are going to meet business strategist, the owner of Velocity Business Strategist, Krista Crotty. Krista Crotty leads business owners and entrepreneurs to success and beyond. As a business strategist, he helps businesses join the idea phase, the startup phase, and grow phases. Nowadays, she is focusing on how businesses can evolve and change to come out thriving during this social distancing time. Wow. With a background in mechanical engineering and production and operations management, she is a natural problem solver and understands firsthand the corporate world and the evolution phases of an entrepreneur. As a trainer and master practitioner, of Neuro Linguistics Programming, NLP. She further helps clients with the mindset and seeing the opportunities rather than focusing on the obstacles. With successes and failures in both traditional business and network marketing and direct sales, expose her strengths and weaknesses and all the learnings that came with them. These also help her hone the skills to help others. From engineering to funnel sales to wine, she loves helping business owners and entrepreneurs find their passion and turn it into profit. Wow, let's go and meet Krista. I'm excited. Hi, thanks for having me, Elizabeth. It's great to be here. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what I do and how I help companies. Um, what I do is I do business strategy. Mm -hmm. So it's like having, it's basically business coaching, business consulting. Mm -hmm. And I come at it from a love of motorsports, automotive, racing, uh, my background in uh, race cars for over, oh gosh, 25 years now. And there are several parallels between running a business, doing business, being in business, and motorsports. So um, one of the big things is preparation, is what happens behind the scenes before, in the case of motorsports, what happens before you even get to the track. Um, a lot of it is a lot of prep work, a lot of wrench turning and that before you even put the car on the trailer to go to the track. And then there's a lot of prep work once you're at the track. And then there's the, you know, 15 minutes or two hours or however long the race is, yet there is, you know, 30, 60, 90, hundreds of hours in prep work prior to getting to the racetrack. Um, you know, in the world of business as well, you know, most people will know the business owner or they'll know the brand. I equate that to the driver of the car. Every car, you know, needs a driver. Every motorcycle needs a rider. And in a business, you have your owner, you have your front person for the business, and then you have your crew chief who does all of the strategy and coordinates everything that needs to happen to put that car on the track and that driver in the driver's seat. So I am the business crew chief. What I do is I work with individuals, I work with companies, I work with teams on understanding their strengths, their weaknesses, and where they can outsource um, parts of their business. So the owner is the driver and I help them by establishing a crew for them, you know, establishing where they're at, uh, what they understand, how they do things well. And then I find them the tire changer, the fueler, the, um, you know, the adjustments person. So in the world of business, that's your board meeting or your, um, your board members, your advisory board. So your accountant, your lawyer, your um, bookkeeper, your CPA, you know, your business strategist, your, you know, your sales and marketing person, your digital marketing person. I mean, there's a plethora of roles to be filled beyond just being the business owner. 
And you can choose to do all of those on your own. I will tell you from experience, it's easier when you outsource some of that, when you have a tribe behind you and you have people that believe in what you're doing, that are there to support you. Um, and one of the biggest things in starting to develop that team is being authentically you, being true to yourself, speaking your voice, exuding that passion of why you do what you do. You know, for me, I love helping people. I love watching businesses grow. And in doing that, I learned over the last several years, I get to incorporate my love of motorsports into doing business. You know, I was given some bad advice when I was in, um, in my late teens, early 20s of separating the two. Don't talk about your, you know, don't talk about your racing, never included in a business conversation, business is business and personal is personal. And I struggled with that for a long, long time. And now I look back and when I had opened myself up and I had allowed people to see me for who I am outside of work, what I do on the weekends and where I show up from a place of um, loving motorsports. I actually landed some of my business biggest clients because we talked about racing. So, you know, when I was running an engineering, uh, working with an engineering design company and ultimately ran their compliance division and then blossomed into a completely separate business, two of my first clients were from conversations we had over lunch or dinner at a conference not from the sales presentation that I did at their company. Yes, they did the pre I did the sales presentation. I did that sort of nuts and bolts part of it. The fact that they hired me over my competitor came from the fact that I was authentic and I let them see the other side of me, if you will. Um, so for me, the, the motorsports part of it is really that's what I'm passionate about. And I'm now able to bring that passion and that intensity into the business world. Um, you know, Velocity Business Strategist is exactly what it is. You know, we accelerate success. We work with you as your crew chief and help you establish that plan, you know, that strategy, that race strategy for your business to move it forward, to get to that next lap, to see not only the corner in front of you, but to see past that corner and be able to visualize what's in your future. You know, one of the other big parallels in racing is you're taught when you are a driver, you are taught to look through the corner. You don't look at what's right here. You don't look, yes, you check your gauges and you look at the dashboard for a little bit, and when you're actually on the track and you're driving, you're looking through the corner. You're looking at where you want to go versus where you're at. And the same thing is true in business, right? So you want to be able to know where you're at, sense where you're at, and be able to see, feel, understand where you want to go. You know, when you are doing lap after lap after lap, it's kind of like the daily activity in business. You do this, you do this, you do your Facebook lives, you do your marketing, you do your sales, you do your, you know, bookkeeping, you do your planning. And then the excitement comes to the race when you get to put all of that together and you're in front of a client and you start to do client work, regardless of what your business is, right? So you could be in sales, you could be in manufacturing, you could be in coaching and consulting like I am. Even though you're doing lap after lap, you're doing the same thing in business, every single lap is different. There are little minute differences that you will learn from. There are little minute differences that you will have wins from. And, you know, going for your best lap every time is just like putting your best foot forward in business. Every time you do something for your business, every time you do something for your client, striving for your best is really key. So, um, you know, I would love to invite you to ask uh, questions and um, comments. Reach out to me if you have something specific that you're looking at doing. You know, um, 
many people have reached out to me and said, well, what do I do now? And we're on the verge of things opening back up after the difficult times that we've been having. And I invite you to look at your competitors, look at industries that have nothing to do with what you're doing. You know, um, I've done a couple of lives in the past as well on scheduling your success, right? So in order to get the car to the racetrack, there are certain things that need to be done ahead of time. You have to schedule it. You have to get that done in order to get to race at the racetrack. The same thing is true for business success. If you don't schedule it, if you don't plan on it happening, it will never happen. When you look at your day, right? I live and die by my calendar, my schedule, my ability to say, you know what? I've ticked this box. I've ticked this box. I've ticked this box. You know, my, my husband gives me a hard time all the time. He's like, oh my goodness, everything's on your calendar. I was like, well, if it's not on the calendar, it's not going to get done. Like that's my to-do list. That's my, Hey, look, you get to do these things today. You know, um, already today it's, you know, it's eight fifteen, eight thirty Pacific time. And I've been at it since about five fifteen this morning. You know, I had homework for a class that I'm doing. I did my Facebook live. I did some more homework. I did some business strategy for a client. I did another interview. And if you looked at my calendar, it's, 30 minutes here. It's 15 minutes here. It's 60 minutes here. It's, it's boom, 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 boom. And I allow myself a break. So, um, I love time blocking. Um, that's another big sort of, uh, that's another big strategy implementation that business owners, um, can do as well as corporate people, you know, block your time in one, two or three hour segments. And of those hours, it's kind of like getting a massage, right? Yes, it's an hour, it's booked as an hour massage, yet you're really only getting 50 or 55 minutes of hands-on time. Allow yourself that break. Allow yourself that mental divide between tasks. Now, if you're going and going and going and you're in the rhythm, great. And still know that especially with these times of, you know, being where we're at and really sitting in front of the computer for so long, get up, walk around. You know, I'm fortunate enough that my home office is in a separate building from the facilities, if you will. So when I need to use the bathroom or get something to drink or eat, I physically have to move locations. So it's great for me right now because I have that break built in automatically. You know, so for those of you who are in an office or in a location where everything's within arm's reach or in the same room, I invite you to schedule in those breaks because, you know, success doesn't happen by accident. Success, success is planned. It is scheduled. And the more you schedule, the easier things become, the easier it is for you to track and really truly see where you are at and how far you've come. You know, it's like the person who's lost 40 pounds, right? They've released that 40 pounds from their body, yet they don't see it because they're with their body every day. And when they see someone that they haven't seen in six months or a year or even a month, that person that they're seeing is like, wow, that's amazing. So that's a different perspective, right? Um, so allowing yourself to document where you've been, document where you're at and look back and learn from maybe something that didn't go quite right or that goal that you've yet to reach. You know, one of the big things with scheduling is yes, schedule it and learn to be flexible in those items that were scheduled. So, you know, one of my mentors says this all the time and I absolutely agree with this. The most flexible person in the situation controls the situation. So let's use a toddler, for example. Okay. The toddler, mommy, I want this. No, honey, not now. But mommy, I want this. No, not now. Put it back on the shelf if you're in the store. And then they throw a tantrum. And they level up and they level up and they keep trying and they keep trying. That toddler controls that situation unless the parent steps in and deploys their own strategies, right? Well, great. You know what? I'm great at throwing a tantrum on my own. I learned this from one of my coaches and mentors. 
throw yourself down on the ground and throw a tantrum. Guess what? The kid grabs your hand like, mom, let's get out of here. Oh my God, you're embarrassing me. You know, it's so situational, you know, being flexible allows you to expand and fit that much more into your schedule. You know, something comes up and, you know, I mean, present times is a perfect example. You know, how flexible have you been in what you do and how you do things, right? How flexible have companies been in doing business? Um, You know, Charles Darwin, love him or hate him, is absolutely 100%. It's not the strongest that survive. It's not the smartest that survive. It's those that are most adaptable to change. You know, are you able to change? Are you able to adjust and flow and be flexible when life throws you a curveball you know when your car starts to slide out of control can you say okay i got this we're along for the ride for a little bit and now you grab that steering wheel and you start driving again and you're like you look back and you're like hey that was actually kind of fun (laughs) right so um you know being flexible is is another real key to allowing yourself to grow. And then, as I mentioned um, before, being authentically you, following something that you're passionate about, allowing people to see and hear and experience the true you. Uh, I buried that for a long time in business, in, uh, in what I was doing. And it really started to come out. I started doing some of these interviews and somebody asked me about my, you know, auto racing and my driving and my motorsports love. And I just lit up and she's like, Oh my goodness, I'm going to keep asking questions about this because that's, you know, that allows you to be authentically you. So, um, I, I love cars. I mean, we built literally a, in some people would consider it a second home. You know, we built a 1200 square foot garage to add on to our 900 square foot garage we already have. So, uh, and that's actually, I, I, my office is actually above that. We call it the garage Mahal. And uh, one of my friends actually calls my, my office, the crow's nest because it's on the second floor. Um, I affectionately call it my studio in my portion of the garage Mahal that allows us, uh, allows me to connect with the world and connect with clients. Um, so, and let's see, what else do I have to share with you as far as, um, the parallels between business and motorsports. Um, everybody starts somewhere. That's a big one. You know, we all started out, you know, rolling around in our cribs and then crawling and then walking and then, or, you know, holding on to stuff to walk and then walking and then learning to kind of run and then learning to ride a bike. Everyone starts with their first step. Everyone starts with the first time they sit in that driver's seat and remembering that being conscious of that and understanding that you're going to have to learn, you get to learn along the way versus going out and driving a Formula One car right off the bat. That doesn't happen, right? You know, you have, you know, most people will, most drivers will start out with, you know, some type of go-kart or driving experience, and then they'll build on that. The same thing goes for business, right? We all start somewhere. You start with a job or you're born into a family business and you learn the business growing up. Um, I was born into my dad worked for, you know, worked for his dad who was a small business, right? So I understood and I was born into that small business, um, self-employed entrepreneurial type environment. And then I chose to try corporate. When I graduated from college with my engineering degree, I went to work for a fortune 100 company. And it was an experience. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I learned what I loved. I learned what I questioned doing. I learned, you know, that was one of the places that someone bestowed upon me. Keep it separate, keep business over here and personal over here. And you know, the two should never meet. And it was actually then one of my managers at IBM that was like, gave me a hard time for bringing my lunch every day. You know, we had a great cafeteria. And I would bring my lunch every day. And he finally got to the point where he was like, you must need tires for the race car or something because, you know, most people will buy lunch at the cafeteria and not, um, not bring their lunch. So I was like, Hey, look, I can bring my lunch for 
two or three dollars a day versus spending eight or ten dollars a day in the cafeteria and by the end of the month guess what I can buy tires for the race car or I can have this done or I can have that done or I have the entrance fee for my next event so you know it, it's it's looking at things from a bit different perspective of you know this is where I'm at and this is where I want to go and that was one of the stepping stones that got me from point A to point B um, you know some other some other parallels within the motorsports world and business is the people you meet is when you show up authentically as yourself people connect with you that much deeper you know my best friends my husband I met at the racetrack you know I my best friends people that I know when things go completely sideways and in the racing world when you hit that wall and you destroy something those are the people that are there to support you and the same thing is in business if you've surrounded yourself with like-minded people and you've been authentic and you are ready to go get it when you hit a dry patch or you hit a hydroplane for using um motorsports terms when you hit that and you're like oh my goodness i don't know what i'm doing or the oh i'm just i'm done those people are there to support you um and it's the same is true in the business world you know my some of my best mentors my best clients are people that have gone completely sideways with me have watched me struggle and because i was open and authentic with them they were able to see the true me see that i'm human right how many of us can relate to branson or jobs or any of the greats right sure we'd all love to be them but do we truly know their struggles some have opened up some have started to share that and you know we admire them and i would love to have a conversation with any of them and it's also the fact that most of us don't have access to those people. You know, we have access to the, the true greats that are the person next door. They're the, you know, person you meet at that networking meeting. They're that other business owner that is in a comparable business, yet you're not competition. So it's that, you know, surrounding yourselves with, or yourself with that like-minded person that, that person who's struggling and has had some wins, big or small. And I'm just really continuing to keep at it. So, um, Elizabeth, do you have any questions for me or? Wow, listen, <laughs> I was listening to you, right? And you know your stuff, I am telling you, because I did a lot of years of obviously doing, watching motivational videos and listening to motivational people. Um, but the thing is, is that I like how you connect it with racing because, and then how you connect, you know, don't matter whatever you're doing, it, it can go towards your business, you know, um, and let people really see you because that's the same thing that I have been saying on my same channel. Um, <laughs> And the thing is, is that I lived from that because a lot of the, a lot of years, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted to do. It was only this year that I got clear as into what I was going to do with my life. Um, right. And, you know, so it, I'm in awe when I meet people like you that are genuinely out there to really just help the business owner just get to that next level and just be able to that you say see around the corner that you can't see because obviously when when we are you know you're trying to get the next client and you're trying to do this and you're trying to do that there's so much things that we know that we will miss it's like but keeping like when if somebody doing um you know something with their books that you know you're just like why are you doing that um you know at the same thing i can guide them in that sense where you are able to to guide us and I say us as in business owners to be able to get to that, that to that goal. So what I would do though, um, I want people to be able to contact you. So I will, sure. if, when we finish this, I want to get your, I'll put your Facebook page, your, if you have a LinkedIn page, everything yep. down below so that uh, people can connect with you because I think that you're truly amazing from the day that I met you. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Ditto, right back at you. Well, yeah. here's the cool thing. Here's the cool thing. 
you cannot see in yourself or you cannot see in someone else what never existed in you, past, present, or future. So the only way to see the true greatness in somebody is to be able to see it in yourself. Yeah. So I, you know, it's, it's great. I love being that mirror for people. I love being that person that can help them see their true abilities and see truly who they are and connect with that. And for, I will say all of my clients, when that lands and when they're able to truly connect who they are with what they do, their business just absolutely blossoms. You know, it absolutely crosses whatever finish line they want that to be. You know, it's that best lap. It's that best race. It's that phenomenal time that they had in experiencing their business and truly who they are. It's, I, I absolutely, absolutely love that part of what I do. And just so you know, I totally connected my business and my branding and all of that somebody laughed at me they're like well that's an interesting logo and i was like well let's i'll tell you what my logo requirements when i worked with my branding person my logo requirements are it has to be able to be cut out of vinyl and put on a race car and i got this huh like you can't be serious no i'm 100 percent serious because the logo is going on the race car it has to be simple enough to be cut out of vinyl and if you, you know, do all of these fancy fades and this and that, I'm like, no, 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 black and white, or maybe a couple of colors, plain and simple, and, you know, back to basics. So, yeah, well, absolutely. I will get you my information. Uh, well, what I want to do, what I want to find out before we um, end the call, though, is um, what would you, so for example, say that, um, someone comes to say, well, oh, I'm interested in you or whatever, and they come to you, like, what is the process that you take them through um, when they, you know, when you first have that initial consultation and all that? Like, is there a process that you have that you take them through um, before you work with them or, like, getting to know them? Yeah, so it's it's a, I do a discovery call, and what we talk about is kind of, you know, where they're at, what they what they want to do, where they want to be, and what they're truly passionate about. And then through the intake process, we really dive down into how they do things now, how that has served them, and what needs to change to move them forward, and how do we change that right because you know people will do the same thing over and over and over and expect different results and we all hear that you know we've all heard that from time to time right what's the definition you know definition of insanity and genius are just a step apart right insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results mm -hmm. when you can make that minor shift that one small tweak that helps you go couple thousandths or hundredths of a second faster in a lap in a race car, that's the difference between winning and losing sometimes. And that's the difference in business, that small tweak. And it could be as simple as, you know, a 30 minute phone call and you're on to the next level of your business. Um, most, you know, many, many people, I know I fall into this category is, you know, you evolve over time. The great thing is your coach evolves over time. Your consultant evolves over time. That advisory board that you have for your business and ultimately for your life evolves over time. So um, I love getting to know people during that discovery call and then moving them forward, you know, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, part of a group, part of a team, you know, it's, it's really, I truly am passionate about making sure that whatever program someone is in, it's their program. There is no cookie cutter. There is no, you know, well, what works for Elizabeth works for Joyce, which works for Sam. No, no, because they're all going to evolve and change at different, at different speeds, right? Just like the gear stack in a transmission for me is going to be different than a gear stack in a transmission for someone else. So, you know, I'm going to drive a corner what's best for me and the person I'm racing against is going to drive the corner best for them. And we're both going to be successful. So um, I love getting into that nuts and bolts and, and learning what truly drives someone to help them move theirs forward. Listen, you, you always hit me where I can remember, have like a past experience. 
Um, I'm glad that you said um, the part where if you change the way how you do things, because I that I had a problem. Uh, that was one of my problems. Every year at a specific time, I had a financial issue every single year. And one year I said, you know what, I'm just going to do things different. And I forced myself. The thing is, it's really hard when you're doing it on your own and it takes longer than if you have somebody to help you. Um, so for me, it's like, if you definitely can tell yourself, listen, I can pay to have myself a, a business strategist or, you know, a business coach in my life, I will say Absolutely. go for it because the amount of hard work and years that it took me, you will cut down so much on that yep. because changing mm -hmm. your habits is I go by you change Dwayne Dyer's um quote he has the quote that he has is when you change the way you look at things the things that you look at change so you change your mm -hmm. habits you change your mm -hmm. life you know and nothing changes if nothing changes it's true so I I will mm -hmm. end on that one but thank okay. you so much <laughs> um I will pause absolutely stop the recording I want to thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that video. I will leave Krista's information in the description below. Please don't put your co your comments as questions. I'm not a business strategist, so I cannot help you there. <laughs> in the comment section below, I would like to hear what you love about the presentation and what you took away from it and how you would apply it to your life. But before you go, I want to ask you to subscribe to the channel, press that notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. And if you are a business owner and you want to be on here, you haven't seen a business that yours being featured as yet, just send me an email and we will get chatting about that. Thank you so much. Bye.